Hello, welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez. This is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the big challenges facing this country and the region. In today's program, we continue counting the days that the Amazon rainforest burns. It's been weeks, and the areas affected are not only in Brazil, but have spread to Bolivia, Paraguay, and Peru, with more damage expected in other countries as well. So who is to blame for this disaster? Are the governments not doing enough? Or is it just part of the Earth's cycle due to deforestation and droughts? To answer all that, we have Carmen Yos from Ecociencia Foundation. But first, let's take a look at this video. Fire is still on its way to devastate the Amazon. Around 800,000 square kilometers have been burned by negligent fires started in the jungle. This doesn't only jeopardize the stability of the Latin American ecosystem and weather, but also of the whole world. The Amazon absorbs almost half of the CO2 emissions of the world and is very important for keeping balance in the weather of the northern hemisphere. Which effects will this have on climate change on a short and long term? Follow our analysis. So, thank you Carmen for being with us. Thank you. So, how can we explain the Amazon forests burning at such record levels? Well, um, at this moment and after almost two weeks of, of this um, tragic event, really, um, what we see is that there is not enough uh, effort put into uh, putting out the fires. Um, there is a lot of rhetoric uh, from the side of the Brazilian government, really, and um, it was probably um, too little, too late, an action um, that indeed we are not yet seeing um, um, an important result in, in terms of uh, really uh, putting out the fires, extinguishing the fires. Uh, rather, the, as far as I understand and probably we all know, they are um, restarting in some places and the number of uh, fire points of, or fire focus uh, is still um, growing uh, as of today. Um, so it is difficult to say um, really uh, what is the level of effort um, that will uh, put out these fires. In the case of Bolivia, uh, despite the, you know, the the dedication uh, already of a uh, longer time than in Brazil of uh, people, resources, um, um, uh, you know, this, this, this uh, 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 tanker, airplanes and so forth, um, they are not still uh, good news. And in the case of Brazil, um, the number of fires is much larger and as I said uh, too little too late probably um, so it is difficult to say when this will uh, stop. And you were mentioning the the policies of the Brazilian government so why is Bolsonaro picking on a fight on the NGOs you belong to an NGO yourself so how can you explain this battle that he says the NGOs are the ones that are responsible for the fires how could that be possible? Um, well, uh, definitively it is not possible, it is absolutely impossible. I mean, NGOs have not, um, you know, the resources. I mean, it's not, it, it's just absurd to think about something like that. Uh, the fact that, as he said, uh, we are going to look for more funding after this, th that, that is not the point. I mean, as NGOs in, in all of Latin America, and I'm sure in Brazil as well, uh, they have been doing for decades uh, very strong and important work um, in, in, in the case of the Amazon. And it's not these uh, fires that will, you know, put more resources into the hands of NGOs, or anything like that. Uh, the, the, uh, basically, the response of the government on, of Brazil is enough to, and it is evident, when despite who, to, who, who bears the blame, okay, 
it is, it is if, if it would be a government that is conscious about the importance of the resources that are being lost at this moment, and that would show some even compassion uh, for the people who is living there and who is suffering tremendously from all of this, uh, that is Brazilian people, um, he would not pick these fights. He would be. He would act basically. And um, what I think is that the m the most um, benefited from the result of this, in the end, uh, is going to be the um, go the the policies that from the very first start uh, of his um, mandate as the president of Brazil, uh, he has uh, already voiced, I mean, the um, increase of the uh, uh, agriculture frontier um, and uh, the disrespect for the uh, rights in the territories of the indigenous people of Brazil. So after all of this um, is over, uh, what we will have is um, thousands or hundreds of thousands, if not millions of hectares, um, completely deprived of, of any forest uh, that, you know, they easily can grab for, um, it's, it's the land grabbing sequence then, I mean, uh, then after that, we'll start the plantations or the agriculture business uh, in all of those areas. So it is very tragic and I don't think there is any way to blame or to say that the NGOs at the end of this disastrous, uh, terrible uh, catastrophe that is going on uh, will be to gain. Mm -hmm. And on that topic, Bolsonaro himself said that the obstacle for economic development in Brazil was protecting those indigenous lands, those forests that are on the Amazon. Do you see any correlation there? Because you were explaining it's all about the money at the end. Exactly. And I, I don't think, I mean, we, we really as, as a civilization, as we at this point as humans need to ask ourselves what is the kind of development that we want, that we will be able to um, support or that our um, earth will be able to support. It is clear that at this rate uh, that we are going, uh, it will be impossible to, for future generations to experience the quality of life, let me uh, say, for, for everybody that, that we uh, still can now um, enjoy. I mean, uh, the devastation of uh, vast amounts of, of uh, uh, forest areas like it is happening in, in, in Brazil and in other countries, neighboring countries right now in South America, um, will have enormous consequences uh, because it is basically, uh, again, accelerating the factors for climate change um, that it, it's kind of a, a vicious cycle where um, these, you know, all the, the emissions that are being put in on the atmosphere creating uh, these, um, you know, or, or, or basically making us impossible to reach um, the goals that we have in terms of reducing emissions uh, in the near future, because we have to do that, as, as you know, the Paris Agreement uh, says, um, to really not uh, trust, uh, trespass the, the levels of emissions uh, that we need in order to uh, continue to have uh, the resources as we enjoy them. I mean, things like um, water, just the seasonal, you know, precipitation, uh, the quality of the rivers, 
uh, and the water in the rivers, uh, the availability of hydric, hydric resources for um, even for the production of, of food. All of that, I mean, it's, it's really at risk. I don't think that, uh, or probably, uh, you can only say that you will have some level of uh, development and, and income um, in a near t or, or mid-term at the most, but in the long term, um, it is really going to affect um, the even the production, the agricultural production, uh, we can see increases in, in all sorts of diseases um, affecting uh, those populations because all of that, um, the, the climate, the, the resources, all of that is, uh, it's a complex um, uh, system that when things start to completely change on the one uh, hand, uh, they are going to carry uh, changes along many of the different uh, um, cha uh, chains of, of processes that as we understand now and as we assume now, they are um, part of what we need to leave, um, you know, and it's not only of course, I'm referring uh, about consequences that are going to be more uh, clearly noted uh, there, uh, in 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 you know in uh, faster uh, also there. But uh, I think this affects uh, all of the countries in in one way or another, frankly, because. Uh, it has been said and explained enough how uh, this uh, continuous tract of, of forest, the, the largest in the world, um, has uh, so many um, implications and interacts in so many ways uh, with the with the hydric cycles as as we know them and for anybody is understandable that that water is the first most precious resource uh, for humankind. So then after seeing this past weeks all the protests that happened in Brazilian embassies around the world everyone uh, trying to promote change trying to cause change in different governments especially in Brazil but it seems that we didn't do enough or what can we do as citizens, as NGOs, as organizations to try to stop this and to prevent it from happening ever again? I, 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 one thing is that uh, what we are seeing is that not only in Brazil but in other countries as well, uh, the um, governance of the natural resources, usually what you know is in the hands of the ministries of environment around the world, but here what we are seeing is that it is getting weakened you know, it is intentionally being weakened. Uh, the, the, the idea uh, to have less um, control uh, on the natural resources so that basically uh, business can go on uh, with, with, you know, in that sense, less cost um, and more profit probably. Uh, so at I think that we as citizens, we need to continue voicing uh, our um, total, oh my God, our total um, um, rejection. Could it rejection, be a, yeah. yeah, rejection to to those policies. Um, there are other ways of of still producing, still developing. More s much more sustainable ways of doing that. I think that if we don't uh, become conscious about the importance of that and the fact that we are approaching really a um, threshold for that opportunity. Um, otherwise, uh, what we are going to see is just uh, much more people uh, having all sorts of uh, uh, problems in, in really um, 
you know, advancing uh, a life because this, this kind of developing development that they are uh, talking about is only um, development for a few, really, for a few. And in the end, uh, when you destroy resources at that rate, resources that are the only resources that are available for um, very large uh, part of the population that is rural, that lives there, that needs the water and the quality of the water, that needs the food that they can get uh, from those uh, natural um, habitats, um, then basically what you have is just an elite that is making profit out of that, out of a, a resource uh, that is really uh, from everyone. So I also want to see the other side of the argument because a lot of uh, analysts and specialists, especially in Brazil, they keep saying that this is a political topic, that the fires in the Amazon are something that happens every once in a while, that it's normal for the Amazon to burn at those rates. Is that the case? It can be, yeah. I mean, there have been other years when, when tremendous wildfires have uh, taken place, um, you know, erasing also millions of hectares of forest. It has happened in, in Brazil and it has happened in other parts of the world, in Indonesia, for, for example. Um, what is different this time, and it's really different, is that there is not going to be a recovery, or at least from what we can see and from what just yesterday said the government uh, when, was meet, when, when uh, the president uh, met with the governors of the um, states of the Brazilian Amazon, uh, bringing up again the fact that uh, the indigenous territories need to be open uh, basically for business. So th the kind of government and the kind of policies and this kind of dismantling of the you know, em environmental um, governance that was in place in Brazil until Bolsonaro came into power, uh, that is what is not going to be there after the uh, fires. So in 2010, for example, uh, there was a big, dry s uh, a big drought, uh, very intense as well. Um, but then uh, the government uh, and the Ministry of Environment, uh, you know, with, with uh, Marina Silva uh, in front, really put in place uh, several uh, policies that rather were uh, uh, pointed or geared towards um, you know, facilitating uh, the recovery of, of areas that were meant uh, you know, to, to recover. Um, they also um, increased the area that was under protection in the Amazon, in the Brazilian Amazon. Um, and so what we, it, it, it's very different in that sense that after those events, uh, it depends on the government th and the public policies that you have in place to see what will be the outcome, the final outcome or the, the, the use of that land. Correct. Now, if we, if you know, let's say we don't have the numbers yet about the areas that have been burned uh, in terms of forest, like you know, because a lot of that or, or a lot of what is burning is uh, areas that uh, were already agricultural areas, let's say. But of course, there will be new areas. Um, that will be completely devoid of, of, div uh, of, of uh, vegetation. So it is very likely that those will be open again just for agriculture. And, and from then on, all the, the policies to, to open even, you know, uh, m even much more than what has been burnt, of course, uh, much more territory for, for business. Uh, 
that is going to have a completely different effect at the end of the, the cycles. Let's say that we have in eight years or so another drought and again uh, wildfires. Uh, those under those conditions that we can start to you know to project based on the policies of the actual of, of the current government uh, then those fires will be even more vicious than they have been now because there will be more cleared area and uh, so it's it's not it's not normal, really, because in general, at least in Brazil, it has been possible to see that there was a trend towards um, enforcing, um, you know, forest governance, as we say, regulations, control, monitoring, all of that. Um, but in this case, the scenario that we have in the very close future, it's very different. Indeed. And if the damage and that has been going on in the Amazon for so long, it's so desperate, it's so needed to repair, why would uh, governments like Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil reject aid from other countries? We saw that President Macron in France offered 20 million, more than $20 million for the Amazon. And now Bolsonaro is saying that he wants to accept, but it depends if he can control the funds. How does that work when people try to uh, give funds for the Amazon? I, I think that in the end, really, that is all um, like, you know, burning time. Uh, because in the end, there is no really an intention so to stop the fires. There's really not. I mean, even even if very it should be welcome uh, that that support that uh, the G7 was ready to provide uh, for the dimension of what is going on there is is or, or the damage is is of course not enough. Uh, anyways, but that that is not the point. But I think that uh, once again the intention is there to let it happen, um, let it burn, and then we will, s I mean, they will see what they, they want to, to do, uh, and basically what we can expect is what we have been hearing from that government. On the other hand, I think he's playing this, this card of um, the um, nationalism, so n I, nobody has to tell us what we do with our Brazilian Amazon. And uh, that is very dangerous, really, because um, as long as it is understandable that, you know, there is sovereignty on, on, of Brazil on, on that uh, territory, but at the same time, um, all the science has uh, explained, show, studied how important that forest is, not only for Brazil, for, but for the humanity. So it's, it's pretty much like with human uh, rights. When, when there are some instances or, or um, um, institutions, you know, that are multilateral, uh, that really need to have a voice and have the possibility to act uh, in front of such a um, uh, uh, level of problems I was referring to, to uh, human resources. But in this case, it's also, it's also ethic to just uh, do something about it. It's not just an issue of the fires in the Amazon. It's a human rights issue, as you said. Yeah. Thank you very much, Carmen. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. So we've been talking to Carmen Yos from Ecosciencia Foundation about the damage done to the Amazon for the past weeks, how it is still ravaging our forests, and the consequences we will be dealing with in the near future. Thank you for watching interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Until next time.
Thank you.